Guys, hello. I want to give you one guide to help you out in this terrifying and extremely hard metroidvania. I hope you find my advice is useful to help you out on your run. So, let's start and we're gonna open up with the skill tree. This huge skill tree. What you should do first and how you should put your skill points into the skill tree and get the most out of it. You will start from the bottom. You will go with melee damage, you will go with critical strike damage increase, and the most important thing after that is Dogma's Magnet. You don't want to lose Dogma's. Dogma's is basically money in this game, which can buy you a lot of useful things. When you kill enemies, Dogma's drop, and they can disappear. It's very important, extremely important, to get this as soon as possible as your first major upgrade it takes two skill points take it immediately after that you want to go for royal greed on the left and you want to go for royal greed on the right why to get even more money after that you will proceed onwards to critical strike chance to quick dash which is extremely important to reduce the cooldown of your dash because there's a lot of platforming in the game and this is what makes it easier and the next most important thing is to increase immunity time after being hit. Or better to say, you're gonna spam your attack for a bit longer after you get hit and you are immune to damage. Very important for killing bosses. After you're done with the middle part and after you take everything I told you to, then you can transfer to the right side where you're gonna get your damage output, okay? From melee damage, quick cut um combat charge to have even more damage then critical cut for more damage and so on you're gonna ramp it up all the way to the last upgrade but basically the most important thing as i told you is this line that goes up here with this steel for more money do not do anything with the left part of the skill tree because the left part of the skill tree comes in late in the game and of course you can always reset your skill points if you like to play with ranged more than with melee you're gonna switch later on once you decide what you want to do and how you want to play this is the most important here next in line are gems or better to say early gems to help you out along the way one of the most important gems is pure magnetite you upgrade them in your armor while you sit on a throne what it does it makes the game less painful in terms of collecting money and blood so it's very important to have this one to attract money from even further away it scales up with a magnet over here in a skill tree the second one i'm using a lot out of all of them here that you can see for the start was to double the chance of potion spawning when killing an enemy it's extremely useful because potions drop and you don't need to spend blood non-stop potions are those uh red they look like crosses <laughs> those uh two red things you see in the upper left corner all right uh, when you see a potion drops in front of you and your health is low just drink the potions you got and collect the one that dropped. That's how you're gonna have potions non-stop. The next thing I wish to speak about are keys for the Temple of the Kings. Uh, bottom, middle. You can see the key in the middle in a circle. Uh, those would be power-ups. Okay, uh, dash, glide on walls, jump and so on. Okay, all of those classic metroidvania power-ups you need to find keys on a map allocated on a map when you explore and then you're gonna be go back to the librarian over here in this area and these are the doors that unlock power-ups you need to unlock them non-stop in order to make the game easier and more areas accessible to you now one big advice also that i can give is considering backtracking i know you want to explore and you want to see everything there is in a game but my personal advice would be to go for the main bosses you're gonna see uh different colors like this this indicates where the main boss is all right things like this once you kill the boss you're gonna get a 
Very good power up. Okay, uh, what it means? It means you can get double jump and so on. All right. Uh, to access those areas easier. It's very important that you do not waste time and you go straight for the buses. All right. Straight for the buses. Once you collect and accumulate like three or four buses, power ups, then you're gonna start backtracking in the areas you've been into before you enter new areas. That's the fastest way to progress. Quests and journal. Do not pay attention on journal that much. It's better to resolve all of those quests later on because the game won't escape from you. Better to explore, better to chase bosses and then check the journal once you're 20, 30 hours in a game, all right? And start resolving those quests. Quests will usually bring you experience, skill points and, of course, dogmas or better to say, money. Here is the trader on the map. This is where you're gonna buy a lot of cool upgrades. Here is the crystal where you will be able to collect crystal shards. Once you have enough of them, you're gonna return back to the crystal, insert those crystal shards into it, and you're gonna get very cool rewards. I don't wanna spoil much. Every time when you wanna enter a new map, and when it happens, your first objective for every new map is to find a cartographer. The icon looks like this, an NPC that sells maps. Once you buy a map, a map will be discovered and you will know what to do and where to go. So first objective is to find a cartographer and buy a map. Once you find notes, and you'll find them a lot, you wanna visit this area over here, this door. I don't wanna spoil, it brings cool rewards, it brings phenomenal music, it's right here on a map, visit it often, or better to say every time when you find musical notes. Once you discover the forge, you will need a blacksmith to upgrade your gems, gem power-ups. This is how the icon looks like, and this is the location of the blacksmith. I don't wanna spoil anything else. You can acquire some very cool skills out of this old grandpa samurai guy, alright? You need to check the journal for it also, and it comes on a bit later in the game, but make sure that you do his quests. He's located here on the map. Aeterna Noctis is extremely hard and difficult game. You need to fail 20, 30, 50 times in a row on some obstacle, on some platforming areas in combat, and you need to repeat, and repeat, and repeat until you get better. Trust me, you will get better. If this game doesn't make you a better player, no other game will. This is how you learn to play difficult games. After Eterna Noctis, and once you master it, every other Metroidvania will feel like a joke. It is a hard game, it requires patience, Speaking about patience, once you fail 50 times in a row, before you wanna smash your gamepad or your screen, give it a break, leave it for an hour or two, and come back to it. Your brain needs time to process everything you've seen, okay? And you will fare and do better after an hour or two, when you make some mini break, take something sweet, take, take a glass of water. Do not get pissed off by the game, it's not the game's fault you're not able to do something, okay? It is your fault and you need to get better. Practice. Practice is the best way to get better. The game will reward you, okay? The game will really reward you. You'll be a better player, you'll have a lot of fun, and I'm sure you're gonna have amazing time with Eterna Nocturne.